Owning a house with a septic tank may seem daunting to some people, but with proper maintenance, the annual cost is often less than being on mains drainage. We recommend that a domestic septic tank should be emptied annually. Rob Bill Limited, good afternoon. Hello, is Miss Cruz here? I'm meaning to put my annual septic tank emptying. Yes, sir. The drainage system for most houses connects directly into a main public sewer. Where mains drainage is not available, a septic tank of some form is used. The liquid waste from the house drains into the tank. Bacteria in the tank then break down the solids, and the remaining liquid flows out into a soak away. Solids that cannot be broken down must be removed regularly in order to ensure efficient operation of the tank. This also helps to prevent the system from clogging the soak away, which would otherwise lead to a sewerage backup. At Rob Beal Limited, we carry 75 meters of suction hose, which is usually enough to reach most tanks. Where access is difficult, we often stay on the road or can sometimes use a smaller tanker. There are many variations of septic tank. The traditional two-chamber septic tanks are quite common, as well as the more modern baffled fiberglass tanks. The principles are the same in both. We will now look in detail at a traditional system. The first inspection chamber, seen here, allows us to check for correct flow along the main sewage outlet coming from the property and can be used as a rodding point to clear blockages. This is just prior to the inlet of the main tank. However, it should be noted that not all systems may have such a chamber. Traditional septic tanks should have a T-piece on the inlet. This forces the solids to sink and prevents them from going straight into the liquid chamber and soak away. Highlighted here is the primary chamber of the tank where the solids are broken down and where any non-dissolvable residue remains at the bottom as sludge. It is important to empty the tank regularly, otherwise the solids build up so much that they can enter the clean water chamber and even the soak away, leading to blockages. It is usual for a bacterial crust to form on top of the liquid waste. This is beneficial and will often be left after the emptying process is complete. This system has an outlet T-piece from the solids chamber to the liquids chamber. Some tank designs use an alternative outlet type, which will not be visible when the tank is at its working level. This is the liquids chamber of the septic tank, showing the outlet T-piece. It is important that the outlet T-piece is intact, otherwise raw sewage can enter the soak away. Some systems, such as this one, have an inspection chamber after the septic tank, where you can check the flow to the soak away. The soak away is very important as it handles a great deal of liquid. This soak away is beneath the ground in this area here. The entire emptying process usually takes under an hour. For a short time after the tank has been emptied, the level will be very low as can be seen here. However, new waste entering the tank will raise this level back to the normal working level within 5 to 10 days. This can be a confusing aspect of the process and some customers expect the level to remain low. But, as has now been clearly shown, it is the sludge that builds up in the bottom of the tank that must be removed. The high liquid level and drier top crust are normal in an operational tank. Here we can see that this tank has now returned to a working level. Once completed, the waste is disposed of legally at a licensed sewage treatment works. This is in accordance with strict environmental regulations. For further information on the process and a description of the differences between a cesspit and a septic tank, please refer to our tank emptying frequently asked questions at www.robbeal.co.uk.